The straw oboe is a simple toy which will help us understand how disturbance, which is compressed high pressure air, acts as a sound wave. A simple plastic straw is the only material required for this incredible toy. By cutting one end of the straw into the shape of an arrow, you create two free plastic reeds, like a crocodile's jaw, blowing through which allows them to vibrate and create a loud and steady sound. Various aspects of sound, waves, and their characteristics can be studied with the simple use of this toy. It may also be valuable to note that it's due to Bernoulli's principle that the toy works at all. Try making the flute with different types of straws. Very thin and very stiff straws don't work. Why is that? Why does putting the cut part of the straw in your mouth change the pitch of the sound? Cut various holes in the straw so that you can play different notes. Blow and cut the straw at the same time to see how the frequency changes. Download a frequency sampler device on your phone and make marks on the straw to show you exactly how much you need to cut so that you can get a full octave. Verify the theory by actually making sure you get each note of an octave as you cut the straw. Please note that one needs to be very careful while cutting the straw. As one gets the scissors closer to the mouth, say a distance less than 4 or 5 centimeters, the eyes cannot see the scissors properly and you might end up cutting your nose. Please ensure this doesn't occur. Another fun exercise is trying the inverse. Keep the cut part of the straw outside and instead of blowing, suck the air hard. This should lead to the same sound. Of course, you can't do the straw shortening exercise here. Another trick which children absolutely love is to cup the straw when it is at its shortest and making the shrillest sound in your palms while blowing. While doing so, open and close the palms. This produces a wonderful sound, almost as though a small baby is crying. Why is the sound produced? Some more questions to ponder. An extremely interesting exercise can also be pursued in depth by doing the following exercise using the following table. Take the speed of sound as approximately 350 meters per second. Now by taking the wavelength as four times the length of the straw, you have the frequency of the basic note. Using this data, mark your straw so as to produce one or more octaves on your straw oboe and see if it matches up with the theory. Like anything that travels, including light, which is also a wave, by the way, a wave has a speed, wavelength, frequency, and amplitude. We will try and understand each of these. The frequency and wavelength of a wave are inversely proportional. Their product is the wave's speed, which depends on the medium within which the wave moves. The amplitude of the wave is nothing but its intensity or power, that is, loudness in the case of a sound wave. When you blow, the air through the straw moves with a large velocity, which creates a low pressure, which is nothing but Bernoulli's principle. This closes the end of the straw that is in your mouth. Once the straw is closed, the pressure again increases, which causes the straw to open again. This opening and closing causes air to move down the straw and this disturbance is the sound wave. The straw vibrates at the natural frequency of the air in the straw. The disturbance or compressed high pressure air moves down the straw and some of the air gets out while most of it gets reflected back after what's known as phase inversion. After phase inversion, the compressed air becomes a rarefied air column, which is again a low pressure column, which heads back. This leads to a standing wave in which only the natural frequency gets enhanced while the others die out. Hence we hear only one pitch. The science is pretty interesting and complex too. In fact, this flute is not a flute at all, but an oboe. A flute is open at both ends, whereas an oboe isn't. Clarinets are similar too, but they have a single vibrating reed. But our straw flute has two reeds, which is two triangular membranes, which vibrate. Hence, it is technically a straw oboe. To be simplistic, 
You could refer to it as a flute or a clarinet, but technically it is an oboe. Some learning objectives. So this is to demonstrate that two triangular straw pieces behave like reeds or a mouthpiece in a musical instrument, like in woodwind instruments such as the oboe in particular. The characteristics of a wave. Frequency and wavelength, which are inversely proportional. The product is the velocity of the wave. The amplitude of the wave is nothing but a measure of the power or loudness of a wave. And standing waves as produced inside a tube or a straw. An understanding of the following concepts, including definition and properties. For example, frequency, which is the number of cycles per second of a wave. Wavelength, the physical length of a single wave, distance between two consecutive troughs or crests. Velocity, which is the speed of a wave, simply the product of the frequency and the wavelength. And amplitude or loudness, that's the height of a wave, is also the measure of loudness or power in a sound wave. Compressed air is air at high pressure. Rarefied air is nothing but air at low pressure. Longitudinal versus transverse waves. Longitudinal waves are those that travel through a medium and propagate in the same or opposite direction as that of the disturbance in the material, for example, sound waves, whereas transverse waves are those where the direction of propagation is perpendicular to the perturbation, for example, ripples on a pond or light waves. Longitudinal waves require a medium to travel in. Transverse waves may also travel in free space, for example, light. Standing waves, nodes and antinodes. Standing waves, also known as stationary waves, are those that form with one or more points of the wave fixed, formed usually by two travelling waves in opposite directions, whereby you have addition and subtraction of wave amplitude, also known as interference. The musical octave, when the difference in frequency between two musical notes is half or double, that interval is called an octave. Some prerequisites, a basic understanding of sound, pitch, loudness, etc. Making simple length measurements and the simple use of scissors in the case of this activity. The flute, clarinet, oboe, etc. are used extensively in Western classical music, most often together in orchestral works. However, there are works for solo, flute, oboe, clarinet and periods within symphonies and concertos where you can listen to these instruments individually. It's a fascinating exercise to differentiate the sounds of these instruments. And the difference in sound is primarily because of the difference in the vibrating air column. The flute has no vibrating reed, the clarinet has one reed, and the oboe two. There are many such woodwind instruments used throughout the world. The flute is one of those instruments that was conceived in India and has been adopted by the West through exchanges in history. The exact opposite happened with the violin, which is a Western instrument but adopted by Carnatic classical musicians. Waves and sounds of all kinds surround our everyday life. In some way or another, our entire experience with the world depends on waves. What we see, what we hear, even what we feel. These stimuli are all related to some sort of waves. We may not recognize it or even take things for granted, but by being a little more observant and curious, you'll be nothing but amazed to realize how frequency, amplitude and tone affects our being every single moment. We hope you have enjoyed this activity, explored it to the hilt and discovered some of the wonders of waves, and in particular sound. We hope this has brought out not only the scientist, but also the musician out of you. Thank you.